I'm going to show you how to install the Buttonworks keypad repair kit in this bed remote control for a massage and lifting bed. This remote is made for a bunch of different beds and you can find it in white or black. Um, I think some of them have orange in the back. Um, but you can tell by the kind of angled plus and minus buttons, two sets with the big button. If it um, looks like that, no matter what color it is, it's made for a bunch of different bed manufacturers. And they all say uh, this part number somewhere, T-R-U-R-C-N-5. And um, they have a lot of problems with the buttons and oil buildup inside. And this keypad will replace the electric parts, the conductive parts of the keypad. It also, this, this remote has problems with these buttons like sticking. Um, the the uh, rubber is losing its spring and the button is sticking down. And this has little foam pads to give it a little bit of extra oomph to make sure the button comes back. So what you're going to need is a small Phillips screwdriver. It has to be pretty fine tip for the screws inside. We need an old toothbrush, a rag, and you need 91% or 90-91% isopropyl alcohol. And very important to clean this thing up. There's going to be a lot of oil in your remote and we need to get that out of there. So what you do is you take the batteries out and there's four screws. Okay, once we've got those four screws out of there, we need to pry the, um, the back off, the housing, the back of the housing off. And on this orange one, there's a little gap, there's a gap between the top and the, la and the bottom layer, but there is actually a little bit of black on the bottom. So the, the seam isn't right where the orange stops, it's just one millimeter of black. And you can see, you know, look closely, and once you've got those four screws off, you ought to be able to get some small pry tool um, just down here, and it's it splits apart the housings a little bit. And we're not going to pry at all. We're just going to slide this down, yeah, down the the, the seam there, Something like that. And uh, sometimes I'll like twist the tool. This is coming apart pretty easy. Um, you just slide down, and then try to separate the housings without prying. If you pry, you're going to gouge up the housing. You just release the little clips. You can see there's um. There's not much down here for clips, so if it's sticking, it's probably just from um, the screws holding it together um, for so long. There's one clip up here, and then that just comes right off. When you uh, get this open, immediately look for like any kind of oily substance, and we definitely need to clean all that up. This one has already been cleaned, um, and so... This is going to go between the circuit board and the rubber keypad, and there's six little screws. You can't use a giant screwdriver for this. This is um, not a tiny screwdriver, but it's got a nice sharp tip on it, so it takes those off. Okay, now that I've got all the six screws out, um, this should just lift right off and your rubber keypad might stick to this uh, because of the oil buildup. If it does, you just, you know, pull it off. And uh, we need to clean up all the oil. This is pretty picky. And in fact, what happens is you see, there's little holes where the circuits go through, and the oil, um, in all the remotes I've seen so far, the oil has gotten through those holes and built up on the back of here. It doesn't immediately do anything, um, you know, damaging, uh, but it does mess up. See this IC chip here? Uh, it The oil gets in there and it gets between the pins, and that's just a carrier for any kind of containment or whatever that might conduct a signal in those pins and confuse it a little bit. So we want to clean all the oil up. Now, with isopropyl alcohol, you can't hurt these. There's nothing on here you can hurt with isopropyl alcohol. Um, so you can just, if it's really bad, 
you can kind of dump it on there and let it soak. It will pull off that sticker, like loosen the adhesive on that sticker. But um, if you want to do that, or you can use the brush to kind of, toothbrush to kind of move it around so it touches all the oil and it'll like loosen up the oil and make it easier to clean off. If you um, let it soak for a second, it'll soak into the oil and, and make it come off with a rag easier. Some of them, if, if the oil's been there for years, it might be little globs that take a little bit of effort to get off. Um, and we want to make sure we get the oil off the back of the remote and off that IC chip. So I'm going to like just put a little dab of alcohol right there and just sort of let it sit and then brush that chip on all the sides and kind of go, go at it at an angle. And then the oil should come off and the isopropyl alcohol will evaporate really quickly. Um, I wouldn't use the 70%. If 70% is all you have, okay, I would just make sure this dries really well because um, it's got 30% water. And if the water sits underneath, underneath that IC chip, it could, um, you know, sit there for a while and maybe cause some corrosion. Um, but these pads where the original rubber keypad touches... Uh, we want those to be nice and shiny. If they're dull, you know, just make sure you clean them with the isopropyl and a rag and make sure they're nice and shiny. If your rubber keypad is gross, you might want to just take this out and wash it under warm water uh, or either use a lot of isopropyl alcohol or, or soap and warm water. Just make sure it's dry before you put it back. And installing the keypad is really easy. The hardest thing is just not putting it upside down. Um, now, one side you can see the black dots. If you go to a light, you know, where you can see the light reflecting off of it, you can see that it's not reflecting off the black. If it's upside down you, and you move the light, you can see it's too shiny. Um, so we want the dull side to face the keyboard. And also these black pads are going to go towards the rubber keypad. Now the little holes that are cut out for the LEDs are a little bit sticky and what you can do is line up all those little tiny screw holes and these little notches um, right along the, the alignment of the circuit board. We're gonna, I'm going to line up those two holes up there visually and then just kind of then look down here and see these two lined up and see it's nice lined up right there. And then I'll just kind of lay it down and then look down here at the bottom and those screws are lined up good. Slid a little bit. And once I get it in place, just kind of touch a few places and that'll hold it in, in position long enough for you to just flip it over and put the keypad down. Now those little foam pads hold it up a little bit and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure you can't see the repair sticking, you know, through anywhere and overlapping. And I can see it's all good. I can see through those holes. And it's all lined up. So I'm just going to put a little pressure and I'm going to put these two middle screws in first because they're the farthest away. Now there are two different size screws, um, but it's pretty obvious. We want the six little screws. For the housing and then I just push down with my thumb to make sure it's in the right spot and not sliding around and I'll put those two screws in you don't want to over tighten them just get a little snug because you don't want to strip the plastic if you do strip the plastic uh, something will have to be done to fix that uh, but um, it's a little tricky. I mean, you might be able to use super glue or something, but you don't want to get glue on anything else besides the uh, screw posts. Um, the other option would be if you if you do run into problems with these screws stripping out, um, you could get like a little crafty project 
and put in something between the housing, between this and the housing to fill up so that then when you put this together, it applies pressure. Now these posts are already bigger than here. So once you screw this down, it's sort of holding right there anyway and right there. The only possible problem might be if you strip out these screws up here and then when you put this back on, um, there aren't screw posts up there. So you could put in uh, something kind of soft or rubbery, maybe a, uh, like you have a big eraser. You could do something like that. Uh, you don't want to use anything of obviously metal, um, but it'll have to be basically trial and error and you can just see. Uh, now when you're putting this back together, all you have to do is make sure that the these battery contacts go through the housing, but it, it's pretty, it's got a little wiggle room, so it's very easy to do. Just put it in there, make sure they're there, and then just push on that and it'll snap together. Now I would recommend just testing it before putting those screws on the housing, the four screws. And, oh, hold on a second. You've got the LED indicator when you push a button, you can see that. If any of you are wondering, um, is it actually working besides the button coming on, is the, is the radio working? And you can get these little testers um, and basically it detects radio signals and I push and hold that button down and then I can push a button and you hear the beep when you see the light light up. So those uh, foam, the foam added onto the buttons that gives it a little pressure um, really helps make sure that those spring back. If you notice you're, you're pushing the button and it's just staying there when you let go, it's not coming back, um, then it can be shorted out. It can be hold, you know, if the light stays on when you let go of the button. I mean, some of these have, rest of these have a program that hold it on for a little bit whenever you push it but these should just come on and off when you push it and then off when you let go so if it's a little sluggish um, then that's um, the rubber is wearing out and that foam strip should take care of that but maybe your remote's five years older and very very worn out and you want to keep it going you might find some other foam that you have. It's craft foam, um, you know, it's available in any craft store or you could probably use anything kind of squishy like a little slice of, of um, kitchen sponge or, or well, that will dry up, um, but something that's foamy and, and squishy. And that's it. Now that we know all the buttons work, I just put in the four screws in the back of the housing Now, now potential problems with this, if uh, a button is stuck down, as I mentioned, if the rubber is worn out um, or there's something in there, uh, you've got dirt built up around the buttons or maybe a piece of plastic or, or the repair keypads out of alignment or whatever, for some reason, if a button is being held down all the time, let's see what this one does. All remotes are different. So if I was holding down heads up I put in the battery. Yeah, see the light does not come on. But if I let go and then push it, it does. So if your remote's completely dead after you do this, one of the buttons is stuck down. Not easy to do, but if it's out of alignment or if there's um, some something holding one of these down, maybe it's crooked when you put it back together. Uh, so just check that all the buttons feel good and look good and spring back you know you can look at it at the side and see okay is this one like stuck down like that permanently then you gotta figure out what's going on with that and get that fixed um, so that's it thanks for watching